What is up, our people? And welcome back to another episode of the Fang podcast. That is mm-hmm. first American Nigerian generation. This is your girl, Rebecca, a.k.a. the greatest of all times. I know. I know. Right. Are you sticking with that one? No, I change it up every episode. That's my thing. Okay, I guess yeah. somebody has to ch- keep it, keep it. You know, I need to add a going. little spice in it. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but who are you? Um, who am I? The one and only. It's Mercury. Any others account of it? You already know what to do. Check your pocket. Period. Um, and if you guys are watching us, you will see that we have two gorgeously beautiful, handsome people hey, stop, on the stop, set with on. us. Ah, I see his hey. head swaying. <laughs> Let them know who you are. Wanna go first? I could go first. Hi guys, my name is Bammy. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Big Bammy. Big Bammy in the building. <laughs> and uh, my name is Jola. Just Jola. Yeah. Angela. Angela. You yeah, follow me on IG. Um, <laughs> Jola. You gotta put the little plug in there. Yeah, Facts. I have to, yeah. But everything is going to be on the screen. Um, all links and information will be in the description. So make sure you check that out because reading is very fundamental, guys. All right. And you can catch us wherever you get your podcast. Big per. We have Angela and Big Bammy here. Right? I said that right, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have them here today because they went to HBCU and we went, as you don't, if you didn't know, we went to PWIs. Yeah. So quickly, just let them know what school you went to. Yeah. If you uh, want to share that. I'm sorry? If, if you want to share, share it. it. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I went to Howard University, the illustrious Howard University. Um, big H. <laughs> yeah. Big the H. real HU, yeah? Yeah. Isn't that what they call us? I, too, went to the illustrious Howard University. You know, the oh, wow. real one, not the fake one. Oop. <laughs> right? I thought that one right in the chest. Um, and I went to a PWI. At least I think it's a PWI. If you guys don't know, college is Staten Island. And I went to the infamous Buff State. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I feel like everybody that lived in Brooklyn that wanted to go the way to college that was and it. didn't think too hard about college went, went to, to Buff State. Yeah, that was <laughs> that or like Albany. Or yeah. yeah. Albany yeah. and Buff State. They're kind of up there. Buffalo's for a little bit more of the people that actually want to get their lives together? No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> not get their lives together. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, maybe Albany a little, a maybe, little bit more. Maybe Albany's a little bit more. I think Albany's a little, a little, bit a little just hmm. a little bit. Yeah. They dorms scare me, though, but, like, definitely, really? yeah, their dorms was, you like, a like, jam. Howard's dorms. Jeez. Yeah, that's hmm. not... Man, are we going to, I guess we're going to I mean, talk I've about seen that some later. stuff on, like... like I've seen some stuff on, like, social media it's about the Twitter, dorms and, like, and shit. And it's, like, something that's, like, you know, like, people getting, like, uh, like, people are retweeting and it's getting hella, like attention it's just like oh wow yeah. damn y'all yeah, living conditions were really? bad they had us in the whew. i can't believe it because i really wanted to go to school there i, I did really i applied to school. howard so i didn't get in though <laughs> i did I, I was a badass child <laughs> i told you i didn't take school seriously oh i remember God. when i got my decline letter i was in the middle of the night i think i woke up like three o'clock i saw i got an email i was like yeah did i get in i didn't get in wow. <laughs> it was funny we have Two different experiences there. Like, uh, you know, you got declined and it's like, okay. Like, you first thought that you were going to get an acceptance. You know, like, you saw it. For me, I told my mom, I got into Howard. She said, oh, Harvard? Harvard? <laughs> I'm like, oh, nah, like, Howard? You know what I'm like? Wait, she 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 said, she's like, oh, yeah, like, that's good, too. You know, it's like, Not you know, like, that's too. two completely different perspectives. She so didn't understand like, the weight that Howard yeah. holds nah, for yeah. a yeah. black man. Okay. That, 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 that just sounded so, like, philosophical, but... Um, it is philosophical, if you think about it, because she's Nigerian. Like, yeah. the, the Harvard yeah. is way better than Howard oh, in their eyes. They don't really understand or get the history behind it. That's, like, why... My mom wasn't thing. too happy when I got in, I'll See? be real honest with you. Really? Yeah. Why? Why is that? Um... She was expecting Big Ivy. I told her, <laughs> next best thing. So No, literally, it's probably the next best thing. Yeah. Because I know some people that have given up, like, Ivy League schools for Howard. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And it's I like, would. They, they're like, nah, I'm not going to go to Cornell. Like, I would, you know, I was actually you know, one of those people where I was like, you know, got off a wait list for Ivy League. I was like, okay, like, but there's also Howard. You know what I mean? But at the same I already... I already kind of told myself, I was like, I don't, I don't mind seeing myself there. You know what I mean? And like getting off a wait list at, you know, pretty close to the time that you're about to matriculate doesn't really make any sense. No, you know, so yeah, I'm not like, going to lie. Um, after my experience with the uh, palm colored people, I, I couldn't, I couldn't palm do it. Palm colored people? people? What's yeah. oh, that one? Uh, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> 10. Small 10. Okay. I see what you're talking yeah. about. Damn, that that's kind of. 
That's harsh. Palm colored people. I mean, <laughs> it's I a mean, color. We all grew up in New York, so like you know, this it's a very diverse place. You know what I mean? You get yeah. to meet different types of people. Yeah, I just um, never heard that one. Yeah, I've never heard that one either. Can't lie I like to you. Like to mix it up, you know? Yeah, I feel like <laughs> it, I mean, you did the complete opposite. You know what I mean? You went <laughs> it's like you won't expect that the... palm color. Like you, you what's that? Uh oh. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like I guess <laughs> for me, I kind of realized that like you know you're still gonna come across those particular types of people, especially yeah. like outside of school. You know, you're still gonna come across them, and it's just like. While you are enjoying your education, you want to be in a in a kind of an area where you're allowed to be yourself. You know what I mean, and be around other That's people true. that in are theory. trying to do big things. And you know, it was a fun you part. Yeah, because so like it was a fun that, four years. Isn't I, I would that say. supposed to make your like your experience better? Being surrounded by people who look like you. Yes, it no. does. It does. It gives you that ammunition to want to do better. At least that's what I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. Compared to being in a room with no one who looks like you, no one who relates to you at all. Yeah, and, like, and, that's and, scary. I've went through that, and that's very scary. And do you know what's really funny is is the fact that like um, with people at Howard, you get the the select few the, the select few people that actually want to help you, and the elitists. You know. Yeah, I oh. feel like I ran oh. into a lot of elitists. I had a way different experience. Okay, there. wait, tell us about that. Like, who are the elitists? Like, what what do what do they consist of? How like because so, I would not, I probably would not know one not if I all. met them for the first time. You know, if they wasn't yeah. like as we're calling them palm colored people. <laughs> you know, like, so what does one of our shade look like? I feel like in Howard, there's kind of like three main groups. There's okay. like the group that's kind of elitist just a, just a tad bit um there's the group that's more kind of homegrown and then mm. there's the group that's international i feel okay. like in between you fall into one of those three the elitist they're more so like they come from some form of privilege mm. and they're used to you know kind of having to be in a place where their blackness is not validated. So exactly when like, they're in this entirely black space, it's kind of a shock to them. So mm -hmm. they kind of try to uphold, like you um, know, kind of what was done to like them. Kind of like a macho, yeah. Like it's, in, I, yeah. I kid you not, my oh, freshman wow. year, freshman year, moving to my freshman dorm, and I see this kid. His his parents are helping him moving in, and they're helping him moving in, and they're helping him move in in a Maserati, like. Ooh, I'm yeah. like you, it's just like one of those we things. We only like, think about it in our songs, you know, <laughs> and it's crazy because it's like you look at this kid, and you, I mean, obviously those are successful, you know, black right. people. You know what I mean? Probably the dad was a lawyer, and like the mom is a surgeon. That's the type of people yeah. that you would meet. Like, can no, I just are, ask that when we, of course, just um, as we continue on, like let's because we're literally just talking about the black community, mm -hmm. right? Let's let's use terms like African Americans and Africans. That way we could differentiate. Because when we say blacks, we're in that category. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But within our community, mm -hmm. there is a differentiation. There's yeah, so African Americans would, with the Maseratis. Yeah. So I would say the African Americans, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, it's not just that kid that has, I would say, you know, those type of parents with, you know, that have been able to award that kid privileges. It's a select few at the school. Mm -hmm. And it's like, at times, it's not that it's done intentionally to kind of be an elitist. It's just one of those things where it's just like, you kind of grow into that Definitely. based on the type of people that you meet on campus. Because you'll see that people are from different backgrounds and you'll be like, wow, like this person's background is like, it's, it's kind of like different from mine. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes a while for you to really understand that until you start to gain conversation with them. It starts to have like a condescending kind of vibe to mm. it, you know what I mean? When you talk about either your academics or something about your family, and it's just like, damn, like, you know, I was just, I, I thought it's it was cool. It's a whole cool, different kind of know? pride. Mm. Yeah, it's a- it, it, it's, it's unfounded too. Yeah. Very unfounded, because when you're in a space where everyone looks like you, there's no need to kind of like show class because mm. the spaces they're coming from, they're probably of but a small handful. It's probably like- right. The only five black kids or exactly. African American right. kids where they're from, but when your entire class is black educated kids, mm -hmm. it's like now you're kind of doing something to differentiate yourself apart from your from blackness, the oh. and it, then it goes to class, and it's kind of it sucks because it's like it doesn't look pretty, it doesn't feel pretty, and it's like something you have to navigate through. Okay, so from what I'm hearing, it really just sounds like as Nigerians going to 
an HBCU, right? It sounds like, okay, you guys really were feeling the difference between being African-Americans and being Africans. Especially for me, someone who's a little bit more Americanized mm-hmm. in my African culture, I definitely feel like the differences were so drastic because it'd be like, I'd talk about certain things and people would look at me like I'm from a third world country. And I'm just <laughs> like, are you so serious right now? Like, I remember this one girl, I was telling her about like just my experience in New York, like being able to go to like a corner store and grab something to eat. And she right. literally stared at me and was like, my dad will never let me eat at a store on a corner. And I'm looking at her like, <laughs> girl, you eat from a gas station. Like, let's be Wawa. Wawa. Like, They love Wawa. Like, I would like, never eat in Wawa. Outside of New York is like, What's Wawa, Wawa. Wawa. Yeah. Wait, what is it's it's a gas station. It's basically oh. a glorified gas station. Like, yeah. In the sense of like, they, it's a gas station, but they but they sell food there. Yes. It's like, Wawa is just like, oh, wow. Like, you can actually... I mean, I won't lie. Apparently, the things there... I mean, I've heard that the things there are, are, are edible, really good. Are edible, <laughs> edible. I've, never I've, never I've never tried it. I've never tried it either. I've never tried it. I never will, probably. My mother would not allow me to eat I, I, I just can't understand. And she's complaining about a corner? Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah. But that's so interesting, isn't it? And it's like, we can't eat at a gas station. They, like, they can't eat at a store in the corner. Yeah. That is insane. Ridiculous, actually. I had to let those people go. But why? Um, At some point... You have to stop fighting your blackness. Hmm. And I feel like a lot of those people, they they didn't reach that point when I did. So it was just like, we just had to go our separate ways. Especially when they would run into like more of the African community Mm. or the international students. It was like a certain form of ignorance that just rubbed me the wrong way. Definitely definitely a lot of ignorance, I would say. Um, I'm someone that I'm pretty close in the international community at Howard. I've... Because, you know, as you guys know, I'm a very cultural person. You know, I... I play talking drums. Yeah, I play talking drums. I'm that quintessential, you know, Nigerian boy. But um, what I would say is that, like, kind of kind of juxtaposing my experience in, like, like in the sense that, like, being around African-Americans and being around international students, mm-hmm. um, I've always been drawn closer to the international community. Mm-hmm. And that's just because of the fact that not only does it uh, make me feel like I'm a part of a bigger culture, but it allows me to be myself, right? right? Because at times one. when we have different events on campus, at times, you know, um, we could have a ASA event, which is the African Student Association. You could have an ASA event, you know what I mean? And it's like everybody feels included. Everybody feels like they're being seen, they're being heard, they're being represented. Even if you were not African. Yeah. We had African-Americans show up and they... You know, this is somebody that has a quiz the following morning. You know what I mean? But they were able to come to that event later on in the evening and show up because they feel like they're part of a bigger thing. Whereas with certain events that the African Americans would do, right? It feels it, a little bit more excluded. It right? feels a lot more very, very, it, it very feels a lot more exclusive, and it mm-hmm. feels as though like you have to be this, 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 or this to be in this bubble, right? Mm-hmm. You have to be right. either from Missouri. Your mom has to be a lawyer. You know, you know, you know, like your, you know, like your cousin yeah. has to be from this, this, like it's like a whole bunch of different criterion. But they won't tell you the criteria. Though. Yeah, they won't tell. They'll you. never tell those, you. It's like, it's like if you know, like you know. Everybody in that particular place, they have that same similar, you know, background or that same similar, and it's just like you just like okay, maybe you know, you just feel kind of yeah. Weird. It's a lot of like background work that nobody would ever tell you has to be done. But you just have to know to do it. So because of that, it's much harder to get into certain spaces, certain clubs, certain organizations. Because you already have to already know who they are yeah. and about them. It's kind of interesting because when I I work around a lot of Caucasian people, and a lot of the times you would hear when they're talking about their kids, you would hear them say like, "Oh, my child has a play date with." this child but they also have a relationship with that parent but they would know that parent's whole background and they met them through the child mm. but you kind of get to know everybody in that area like people are they people are married to different mm. um spouses and then they're talking to each other and next thing you know they're like oh my husband works as a sheriff too in this department mm. and it, so i see what you mean like it's kind of like you have to already know yeah. and then boom you have the the realization that oh, this relationships work. Like, my auntie knows your uncle, so mm-hmm. we could be cool. That's how it sounds, right? Yeah, that's exactly how it is. But it's a little 
it's a little different. It's a little weird, I would say, because it's like when you think of Howard, you think of like black Mecca, you know, yeah, all the people that are black. And exactly. a lot of kids are like from middle class. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> so they don't have a lot of this background knowledge. They don't have a mom whose cousin went to Howard right. or they may be the first in their family to go to HBCU. Right. So they don't know a lot of the small cultural things that go About into the school. it. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like when you get there, you kind of feel like you're stranded once again, but everyone looks, everybody looks like you. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, okay, now I'm, I'm singled out because of my skin color. Right. Now it's kind of like I'm singled out because of, my class, my background, where I came it gets from, a lot more what intricate. I know. Yeah, it gets a lot yeah. more like, it, it doesn't matter in any sort of civilization, there's always going to be something that people are going to look to kind of separate them from other people, right? Right. And mm. at Howard is a lot more amplified because you're just surrounded by black people. So it was like, a, in a sense, culture shock for you guys too. Yes, Big it was culture an absolute shock. culture shock. Absolutely. Especially Big. because like, I grew up in New York uh, in a in a Hispanic, you know, like in yeah, a Hispanic mm-hmm. neighborhood, you know, I went to school around the Dominicans, mm-hmm. the Puerto Ricans, you know. You did. I went to. I'm sorry. I said you did. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, nah, because you grew up, you grew up around you, like you said, we live in the same, we were living in the same part of literally, yeah, like a block from each York, other, yeah, mm-hmm. right. But he. His um like my community was Dominicans, Hispanics, yeah. and I'm over here around Caribbeans. Yeah, and so it's and so was, crazy. Exactly because like I also consider like I went to school in Bushwick, so as a result of that, it, you know Bushwick is you know, his Hispanic dominated area. I would have never. That was know. where I went to high I school, middle school, Me and either. and and high school. Whereas for her, she kind of stayed closer in to in you know, in the area, yeah. you know, where you get you know like the Jamaicans, <laughs> the Trinidadians. You know what I mean, like. You know, you would go outside and you would hear soca outside. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, literally just be me, walking home and start pelting my waist. <laughs> <laughs> and literally for me, it was like, I was hearing like Bachata. gasolina. Like, I was like, <laughs> you know what, what I mean? Meant it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So kind of coming to something of a melting pot in New York City, you know, because we were able to get those different experiences, even though right. we live in the exact same neighborhood, right? Right. Whereas going to Howard, it's a little bit different because like, it's a it's a huge culture shock. You're like, wow, like this is not. There's also the painted image of what Howard is and what and it what really it really is. is. No, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, I, and I feel like that's something that when you it's it's not something that you can fully digest until you've graduated and you can really like yeah. do a lot of introspection and on your time back. there. Mm-hmm. You're like, wow, like you just start to notice certain things. Sometimes I'll be driving I'm like. Wow, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, now you like, know something. Something new. just clicks. You know what I mean? And it's mm. just like, okay, you know what I mean? And it's like, if you could obviously, like, you can't go back and change things, but at times having those moments where it's like, you know, there's like, you know, a light that goes up in your head, it's like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. And then it just adds to a lot more of the culture shock, especially when you're out in the real world again. It's like, okay, wow. This was definitely like some sort of bubble, I would say. It was a big bubble. A massive bubble. It was a massive bubble because, you know, we could talk about different things, you know, about the fact that, you know, like the friendships there, a lot of them are, dare I say, you know, artificial, you know, like in the sense that- Artificial? I don't do that. In the sense (sighs) that like the friendship is is based on convenience. Mm -hmm. Convenience in the sense that Mm -hmm. we're all in the same area. So like, let's be we friends. We might as well be friends. And yeah. it's like we're also black. Let's be friends. And you're Nigerian. Let's be friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like <laughs> you can't pick your friends based off of that. Yeah. That's and how you they become. Like, no, you're not really my friend. Exactly. Yeah. You start to you start to kind of be your own people. And you're like, wow. Okay. Um. Yeah. We're still gonna be friends. You know, like we still go out to the same parties and stuff. But it's like when you graduate and you take a step back. You start to realize, like, this person really wasn't my friend. For me, it was a little different. I immediately kind of noticed, like, the dynamics of people. And I just had to immediately pull myself out. Yeah, I was was definitely a latecomer to that party. You know what I mean? (laughs) You was in the bubble for sure. (laughs) Yeah, I had to pull myself out immediately because it just became too much. It's like okay, I have to navigate one personality with this group of people because mm. this is Ooh. a part of me that they understand. Different personalities, And then man. another personality with these people. And then I think it was probably like my freshman year, I said, I'm done with it. I'm done with y'all. You, you take all of me or you, you take none of me. The you were done with the code switching. You were done code switching within the community. Yeah, it was too much Absolutely. because it'd be like, 
Like, for example, I would bring home food from home and people would be like, oh, what are you eating? And I'm oh just like, gosh. come on, guys. You ever like, see that TikTok ooh. where they be like, oh, I can't marry uh, someone that's not Nigerian because yeah. I don't want to have to explain why yeah. I eat with my right hand and yeah, not my, my left. left. Yeah, yeah, it was things like that. I was just like... For my own mental health, you guys have to go. And it's like no bad blood to you guys, but... It's just too much of a boundary. cultural difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, especially me, it was like a really big shock because like in the African community, they call me pretty American. Like yeah. I'm not yeah, as true. involved yeah, in the culture. Yeah. So it's like... Too American for Nigerians. Too Nigerian <laughs> for Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where's the middle? Was, where do, I, where do you fit? Different. I think like... Thinking about our experience, because I remember we had Yoruba class together. Yes, there's a Yoruba class. Oh, there was a Yoruba class? Yeah. Yoruba class they pro our pronounced it Yoruba, right? No, no, no. no. It they was, pronounced I, it correctly. Actually, Yoruba, 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 Yoruba man, man it, yeah. Oh, wow, because I only heard Yoruba. We mm -hmm. literally, like, they literally, because I remember uh, one of our friends did um, the summer abroad program yeah. in Nigeria. Oh, that's cool. Like, dope. They, yeah, got that's a, they got a chance to attend, I think it was wow. University of Ibadan. Yeah, it was a good one, And then they spent a couple weeks there. It was, and this was during the summertime, like, this is what opportunities are how it exists. Like I will, like I will, I will take that with me. Like I will, Perfect. it's, it's one of those places where there's always an opportunity. Um, but in regards to kind of the bubble between, you know, being more African and being more, you know, black or African American, it's a constant struggle every single day. Because for me, I'm in certain groups, I'm in certain groups like with international students where, I can use my accident. I can use the accent. Oh, I can, I can, I can mm. speak the way I speak at home with my family. I can speak with them there. And it's like, if I use this current accent, they're like, God, fine. I'm like, why are you mm. like, why, why, yeah. why, why, why not you like, showing me? <laughs> like, why do you use all these uh, grammaticals for me? Like, uh, uh, sorry, bro. So, so it's like, and then I get back to this, right? And then it's like, in a more of a dominant, you know, African American group, I'm, more so forced to talk like this because then like if I don't I feel like I'm not included I feel like mm -hmm. I'm not being heard it's like a completely different dynamic because they Can look I say at you like about that? Mm -hmm. when it comes to the switching the accents I used to only switch it because when I was used to talk to African Americans including when my ex-boyfriend it would be like because of the accent they could not understand, understand. my English yeah. even though you could be using English better than them they would not understand it because the accent is different. And yeah. I think that's pure ignorance. It, that's and, the ignorance and, and, and I'm I mean, talking about. And I think it means they're not good listeners. Because I literally, you could be speaking English and it's just an accent. Mm -hmm. Like Nigeria's national language is English. Mm -hmm. So you hear an accent, all of a sudden, what you said? Yeah. I don't understand. And it's not like we have the thick... The thickest of the thickest that's accent. What I'm it's I think not my even accent. It's not like it's patois. It See, and, 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 and let me actually mention something about that. Um... So you have the African Americans and you have people of the African diaspora. Mm. I like to use that term a lot more broadly because people of the African diaspora includes the Caribbeans. It the, includes yeah. the, the West Indians. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At Howard, Hispanics, Latinos, exactly. Latinos. There Latinos. There is a massive group at Howard that are from the Caribbeans. There is a lot of Jamaicans. There's literally yeah. a Caribbean tree on the yard where oh. literally after school they would play music and they would, you know, Feel like, you know, feel like you're back people. home. You know yeah. what I mean? A massive group of, you know, Jamaicans, Trinidadians, like a massive group of, uh, what else? Nepalese people as well. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And something no, that no. I've noticed is that with those with those same groups, they have the same battles that we have as Nigerians. Yeah. Because at times, some of their accents are stupid thick. Like, I'm yeah. talking like, at times I'm like, what'd you say, bro? And it's like, it, and it's not from an ignorance person. I just didn't know what you said. Right. Whereas for some other people... They know what they're saying, but they still choose to act like, I don't know what you're saying. Right. And then even with like professors too, like sometimes it would just be a little too much. Like if you have a professor who has like a thicker accent, people would come to class like, I, I don't even know what you're saying. I can't understand. Can and you clarify? So, and that, it's and like, that's so rude. I, and they really do do that yeah. to, to professors. Because I'd be feeling for those professors with the thick accent. It's like, first of all, they're mass smart because that's why they're here teaching you. Exactly. The least you can do is at least tell them like in a nicer way. Yeah. Can you slow down? Because I don't quite understand what you're saying because of your accent. It's it, There's nothing wrong with being polite about it. Mm -hmm. People just be uproot. I don't understand you. You don't speak English. Go. Then you have the people that are extremists and be like, yeah. go back to your country. 
Chill out. Now nah, that Chill gives out. very much high school vibes because, like, you know, when you're in high school and they oh, yeah. so disrespectful to the it teacher, was high school vibes stuff there. like that. And it's like, come on, now, like, vibes. but we, we learned learn. freshman year of college is very much still it's high the 13th school. Grade. <laughs> 13th college grade. is basically just a larger high school. Yeah, that's, literally that's, all it's, around. It's literally just a big ass high school, and like that's literally what high university is. I feel like some Bus people kind of get it. Like mm-hmm. at some point, they kind of get that like their blackness does not define them Mm. and they're able to explore like the different areas of blackness that Howard provides. Right. And then some people just stay in their ignorance and be blissful in that. And I feel like that's where a lot of people fall off as you get like closer to the end of your college experience, because you start to recognize, like I wasted all my time thinking about like, you know, the class and who I'm with and what I'm doing, not knowing that like, those people, if worse comes to worse and it doesn't work out for them, they have mommy, daddy, who knows somebody who can get them somewhere. Right. And it's not like I have to forge these relationships. I have to seek out these opportunities to do what I want to do. So it's like at some point, some people get it, some people don't. But that's why not everyone finishes with you. So. It's- oh, yeah, absolutely. The people that I started college with, I... Did not finish with. I don't. Mm-hmm. Some of them I don't remember. Like same either. I try to fight mm-hmm. some of them. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> it, and it's nothing wrong with it. It's just the natural course of things. Everyone is on a different course, and it's yeah. like we just go you different find ways. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's like for some people, they think that you know, um, it's anything against them, or it's like it. No, like we just literally cannot. You we know, grow apart. Yeah, like you yeah. just grow apart, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's just like. That's just, like I said, it's a natural course. You know, things will take you to natural course if you allow it to. Because if you don't allow it to, now not only are you hindering your own growth as an individual, but now it's it's come at the expense of somebody else as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because for you, you can spot pretty quickly. I'm, I'm sure we can all be pretty good judgments of character and be like, this person's probably not the best person I should be hanging out with. Right. Like, yeah. And it's like, because of something that you're looking for at times... You keep hanging out with that person and you give that person that false impression that, yo, this is really my friend and I can get really close to this person. Whereas the whole time, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, mm, yeah. But so it's like speaking up at times helps because then it lets the other person know what it is. Time, yeah. You know what I mean? If you like, so that way you are both not in your own delusional world as to what you think this is. And then when it's time to grow apart, it's a lot more painful than it needs to be. Some people really cling to those groups, though. Like, some people really... I've never been good with groups. Me neither. You've been good with groups? Not really, no. Yeah. I mean, no. I like my, like, group of two. Plus me, we three. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no. right. is group is so clicky. Is groups, group, oh. everything Really, is... like, I feel... Yeah, all making me nervous. I feel like I can't... I walk into a lunchroom and I wouldn't... Yes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And you'll be like... The calf? Oh, for a fact. Oh, you better my God. text all your friends before you Literally, walk in. Don't walk and, in alone. And, and, and I'm not gonna lie. I'm guilty of it, too. Like, when it's like... When I'm going to the calf with, with me and my guys, we'll pull up deep as shit. We'll deep? Be like, deep. Oh my like God. No, no, no. To my my guys, school was like bro. that too. Yeah. That's why I always ate in my room or unless yeah. I'm going to the cafe. You guys come in? You come in? You come in? All right, let's go. Let's all go together. We'll all go together. And bare and people we'll just take, And it's like. That shit is social anxiety. It's, it's literally, it's, and it's in social anxiety because especially wow. when you're walking amongst these different groups and you're walking to your table, you just see everybody and looking at you. At <laughs> you. <laughs> it's just like, what are you talking about? They got an opportunity to give me? them a show. That's me. See, that's how I think. It's just one major, it's just one big fashion show. You know what? Mm-hmm. Someone said my um my cousin went to Delaware mm-hmm. for Delaware like State? a year. Yeah, she yeah. went for just a year. And she said that, I think she had said at one point, don't quote me if I'm wrong, don't come for me either, <laughs> Um, is that like every day was a fashion show and she could not handle that after a year because it just became too much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, and she was talking about heels. Yeah, okay. I'm like, heels. heels. I Sorry, dressed up nah. to class, I wore, but I, would, I wore heels to class one time when I regretted yeah, it. Yeah, no, but that's <laughs> going to be one time. It was like, a one She was time. saying one it was an time. everyday Mm-mm. thing. Yeah, like, no, full face. Like, your hair had to be full face. Hair, hair lashes. I, I, I kid you not, I remember, um, it was my freshman year. Like, so typically, like, the... The weather in like the weather at Howard is very different at times because it, like it's DC. DC gets like like really cold one morning, and then by the end of the day, it's like 
75 degrees outside. Yeah. So mm-hmm. at times you have to change a lot. At times I've changed so people, twice three, in a four, day. Three, four, five three times in a day. People, which like, is I've why I said it's just it's one, given a photo shoot session. It's just yeah. because yeah. one big fashion show. I oh kid you God. not. I took an ADM, I took an ADM course with this one. I think it was a speech class. It was an ADM course with her. You know, it's 8 a.m., bro. You just roll out of bed. Everybody is in their baggy sweats and their hoodies. And, you know, it's just like in your Crocs. You just kind of walk into class. And then, like, it's like you finish class. Then you they maybe have another class at, like, 1 or 2 p.m. It's going to get a lot warmer by then. It's not going to be the same. You know, I see the same girl coming up the hill. I'm talking black jeans, heels. She had, like, New this outfit. crop top on. Like, her hair is done. Like, oh, her God. face is beat. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's not just her. It's her and her friends. Mm. They're like a group of them. <laughs> and everyone's just it like, is. And it's like, everyone just looks at them like this. And it's the girl. I'm not even <laughs> lying. It's a little different for girls because with the girls, it's like, you're also, well, not all the girls, but most of the girls are like looking for that male attention, the mm. male gaze. So it's like mm. when you're walking out, you need to make sure that yeah, you look the best. Yeah, you, so you look the best. The attention like, you want. Whoever he's looking at when he sees you, he's going to turn his head. Like you got to make sure. So I'm Damn, talking. This sounds competitive. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was so, and, but, Y'all would not com- a Compete week. for love sounds real. And imagine over the same three, four, five boys. It was. It's not like it's a whole pool. Like, See, and I was just about to mention that. <laughs> it's not the same guys. Come I was saying yeah. so my experience, like in the sense, like like from my friend group, like the ratio at Howard is somewhere between like maybe like three, four women to one guy. Oh. The ratio. And then if you now if you not put that into perspective and you add in the, you know, maybe the introverts, the, you know, like the gamers that just kind of stay in their room all day. They don't really yeah. go outside because there are some people like that at Howard. You, you wouldn't even know that they're even at the school. Those, right? really? If yeah. You take out the, if you take out those people and, you know, like the people that are super studious that you never see them, it's more like seven to one. Yeah. It's like seven women Everyone's to one. Social. In terms of the social aspect of it. Now, when you think about when you're not adding the social aspect and you're not consider you know, it's one big fashion show, you know, everyone's competing for attention and stuff like that. And like, you get the sexual tension with different people. And you just, you just like, the bodies like, had to be yeah. I you not, going up. I can't fighting it's like, until the end. Bro. Literally. And it's like, I can't just like, you watch it manifest and you just sit back and just say, wow. And I was friends with a lot of guys. So I got to see like the other side of it. I'm talking about one girl will check them out and the next girl will come down in five minutes and check them back in. Like, it's literally like Hunger Games. Given my cold. freshman year, oh my, God. my freshman year, you know what they used to do? Like, we had a time where you had to check everybody out by. Yeah, I think it was like, a, yeah, 12 a.m. My school was the same. So we would go downstairs, sit in the lobby and the see lobby? who was checking who else. So you know... Oh, oh, you was with her. Oh, oh. You wasn't with me. You left for me. They were yeah. freshman by year. They were ready. Oh, freshman year, I lived in an all in like an all guys dorm. Okay. And oh yeah, dorms was in co-ed. Uh, Only the first the first yeah. year, it's it's um it's uh you know uh, separate based, sex. based on uh sex. Thank you. Oh wow. Uh, sex rather gender and um whereas sophomore, junior, senior years they're a lot more co-ed. So oh, wow. you know, and bus state was fast. Were the we rooms co-ed, co-ed or just like the floors or like the building? No, the, the room, building. Uh, the the building itself was co-ed, but you you would get like a suite with like three rooms, and it would be like maybe like you know. Uh, so like, like the entire four floor guys would be there. So the entire no, floor would be. It wouldn't even be no. a floor. It would be like literally like whoever right next wanted door. to live there. You literally see like a whole bunch of women like right next door. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so, okay, so it's, it's like a, so it's, it's like a one big hotel. If I you say will. it's co-ed. But freshman yeah. no freshman year it no, was completely year, it was, girl was buildings, just, completely guy buildings. Exactly. Oh, okay, so, bus day wasn't like yeah. that. Yeah, so bus day was consider... like you could see a girl in her towel just by looking down the hall. No, damn. Now we each had our own bathroom. We it wasn't like that. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, I had communal bathrooms. Well, it was like apartment style, so. Gave that apartment feel, but girls were in one room, guys were in the next room. You never know who was next door unless you like mm-hmm. knew who was next door. Yeah. So like we did have communal bathrooms, I remember. Um, but 12 a.m. uh was when you have to check out somebody by I think on weekends it was 2 a.m. I really don't yeah, know why so they did that. Um how yeah, so are they are they trying to, you know, <laughs> rest life? Anyways. Um, <laughs> um but what I would say is like once it's that 12 a.m. It's like, especially like, let's say you're coming in into the building, like you've been hanging out with your friends all day and it's like around that time, you just see the lobby, which is 
bare woman, yeah. bro. Right? Like, I'm talking like it'll be 10, 15, 20 women, people interacting with each other, people are looking. And it's not like the type of look it where it's so yeah. intense. It's, 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 I it should do this. It's very but intense. Bust thing was more sneaky. No, like this niggas was not nobody sneaky. Like, Everything was sneaky. sneaky. How would will be brought to light? Oh yeah. my god. It was like if oh you were mess I think it's also because everyone is in like in different groups. So it doesn't take time for things to spread like wildfire. Yeah. You know what I mean? So as a result Damn. of that, like, you know, for some guys, they were they had to be extra careful. <laughs> they tried to be extra careful. Because be extra somebody careful. will see you. Yeah. For some women, they accepted their fate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, he's probably like, like you know, you know what you got yourself two, into. three other girls. I, you know, I'm going to get mine if I want to get You know what Pick I mean? Pick your like, poison. And so it's Pick like kind poison. of looking at it from those two different perspectives. Mm. It, it was, like I said, it was just one big like like high school yeah i had know? a clock out i couldn't do it what are you doing it no 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 i was a good boy you um, couldn't even look me in my eye when you said that <laughs> I, I was a good boy i would say like to my standards at least um to your standards it's okay I, I i trust you i know my i know my brother hey man it's okay hey, man. i know my I made brother it out, right you made it, you made out. it all out happy yeah. i made it very happy very happy very, very happy um how about you here Mm, yeah, because, unfortunately. Okay, yeah. Don't say unfortunately. It's a <laughs> it's a blessing and a loss for somebody else. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like shit. that one. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't do I didn't do the boys at Howard. I I chose. It's peace. good that you didn't. Yeah, the way they were moving. Hmm. Oh, chill, chill, chill. I was a boy at Howard. Like <laughs> the way they were moving. <laughs> you can go ahead. You can go ahead. Not, and you know what's crazy? Like because the ratio were so off. Like it's not even like. You're competing within your class. It's all the girls. <gasps> all the other all class. All the girls. Oh, not the elitist. Yeah. So once you have, like, let's say a, a freshman guy, he could be going any which way with any of the freshman girls. Don't think he doesn't have a sophomore, junior, oh. and senior on hey, speed the lineup dial. is real. I yeah. kid you not. It'll really be the junior, senior guys that will have freshmen, sophomore, junior girls. And it's just like, it's basically choose, like, choose your pick at that point. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, my God. And it's just like, I don't like this. Me neither. <laughs> but it was, it was this is intense. It was one of those things where I was just like, everybody was doing it. So because Not me. everybody was doing it, I mean, it was normal. Yeah, they, were, they were the rare ones. You know, like, I don't think Sammy was. <laughs> Sammy was the rare one. Rare, rare. But no, it's like she, you expected it from other people. Like, you saw it all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's normalized. And there's still remnants of that, especially because some people stayed in the DMV after Oof. graduating. And mm. keep in mind, Howard is in DC and Maryland is right there with a whole bunch of other. HBCUs, Morgan State is there, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so they now we're talking a larger bubble in the sense that you can go on somebody, like you can like go on somebody's Instagram that goes to UMD or that goes to Towson and you have 59 mutual followers. Oh, it's like, no. bro, I don't yeah, know who you are. Why you so diverse? Mm -hmm. exactly. It's not even, because it's like everybody still knows each other. So when there's any sort of major, major event in the DMV, it's like yeah. everybody on your IG is there. I kid oh you not, God. it is so nerve wracking. You're walking through your timeline. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds nerve wracking. It's very me, I don't even like to date within the same community. <laughs> don't yeah, let I mean, me African Americans. I have my selective Nigerians. No, I have my selective. The French part is that it be bare Nigerians. Yup. It just be straight Nigerians, bro. Don't let it be a concert. You're done. <laughs> oh, You're done. Like, I can't. Bro, my anxiety is already off the roof. You're done. If it's like a burner concert or a whiskey concert, hey, Jesus. People be wearing shades there and it's already dark in there. Yup. Don't worry. I've been wearing my shades. We see your followers. One by one by one by one. This is crazy, man. Right. And then so many schools like to host pageants, you know, fashion shows. And it's just like, you know, it, you know what I mean? It, it gets it gets really interesting pretty I'm quick. I'm not going to lie. I think I was built for a PWI. No, that I, I <laughs> yeah. This sounds oh. intense. It, it sounds it's, fun, but it also oh, intense. No, it's fun. It's, it's, I'm not going to lie. It, it's pretty fun. You know I believe I mean? like, it. It depends on how you define fun. I'm... Well... I'm, I stay who I am, wherever, no matter what group I'm in. Mm. So I'm going to have fun regardless. Y'all already know my energy. <laughs> okay? And I don't like code switching. I really try not to do it. Mm. I don't. So I will be fine. <laughs>